the second stage liquid hydrogen tank. At T minus 60 seconds, the eastern range readiness is verified. At T minus 50 seconds, the DCSS liquid hydrogen tank is secured at flight level. At T minus 15 seconds, the ROFIs, or sparklers, are ignited to burn off excess hydrogen at the base of the vehicle. Liftoff will occur at T0. This is Delta Mission Control at T minus four minutes and holding. We anticipate picking up the launch count in just a few moments. T minus four minutes and counting. Upper stage lock securing started. Vehicle transferring internal. T minus three minutes and fifty seconds. The countdown clock has resumed and we are go for launch at 8.59 p.m. Eastern Time. T minus three minutes, 32 seconds. DVC propellant tank securing started. Vehicle transfer internal complete. DVC lock secured. Stage lock secure at flight level. T minus three minutes, 14 seconds. CBC pre press started. T minus three minutes, seven seconds. CBC LH2 secured. T minus three minutes. Vehicle ordnance arming. Vehicle ordnance armed. CBC locks at flight pressure and flight level. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The countdown is on track as we proceed toward T zero. T minus two minutes. TPA script running. I draw press at 4,000. DBC LH2 at flight pressure, flight level. T minus one minute, 30 seconds. T minus 90 seconds and the launch vehicle, payload, ground systems and eastern range are go for launch. T minus one minute, 20 seconds. Upper stage, LH2 securing started. T minus one minute. T minus one minute and counting. Report range status. Range green. T minus 50 seconds. 45. Launch enable enable. GE main power off. Off. 40. Upper stage LH2 secure at flight level. Thirty seconds. Status check. Go Delta. Go GPS. Green board. Twenty five. Flight lock in. Twenty three. SRM TVC blowdown. Fifteen. Rofi ignition. T minus ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. We have RS sixty eight engine ignition. Two. 
one and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV rocket carrying the fifth GPS 2F satellite for the United States Air Force. The global positioning system provides worldwide positioning, navigation, and timing service for military and civilian users. Separation and separation. Both solid rocket motors have separated from the launch vehicle. One minute, 45 seconds into the flight. Now, one minute, 55 seconds in. The Delta IV rocket now only weighs one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at the rate of 1,845 pounds per second. Two minutes, four seconds in. About two minutes remain on main engine flight in the first stage. Altitude now passing 27 nautical miles, velocity 6,118 feet per second, downrange distance 33 nautical miles. Two minutes, 20 seconds in. Still looking good. Hydrazine pressurization has begun on the second stage. Hydrazine fuel is used to fill our Attitude control jets. Fueling for the attitude control jets is used for attitude control in the second stage. Two minutes, 45 seconds in. Chamber pressure continues to hold very well in the main engine. Good engine control. Coming up, three minutes. Mark, three minutes. Now at three minutes, four seconds in, the vehicle now passing Mach 10, 10 times the speed of sound. Three minutes, 10 seconds in. About one minute remains now in main engine flight. Three minutes, 20 seconds in, altitude now passing 51 nautical miles, velocity 12,115 feet per second, downrange distance 118 nautical miles. About 20 seconds remain until we power down to the partial thrust mode in the main engine. Standing by for that partial thrust command. And powering down to partial thrust, standing by for main engine cutoff. And we see cutoff, standing by for one, two stage step. And standing by, and separation. Neds is deploying, standing by for igniter spark. And we have igniter spark, standing by for ignition, and ignition, ignition on the second stage. Second stage, chamber pressure is beginning to rise. Standing by for fairing SEP. Fairing SEP. Good chamber pressure in the second stage, right where we want it to be. 
This minutes. is Delta Mission Control at T plus four minutes, 56 seconds into the night's flight. We've just heard Steve Agate report the successful execution of the events comprising the early portion of this evening's mission. The Delta IV second stage and GPS 2F satellite are traveling southeast over the Atlantic Ocean. The mission is now in the first of three planned RL-10 second stage engine burns, and all systems continue to operate nominally. This burn will last approximately eight minutes. I'm joined now by Lieutenant Mark McCulloch from the United States Air Force Global Positioning System Directorate. Lieutenant McCulloch, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thanks, Matt. It's an honor to be here for the launch of the fifth GPS-2F satellite. So you mentioned the 2F satellite. Uh, what right now is the status of the 2F program? The 2F program is nearing the completion of the production. And right now there's four, four of 12 satellites are on orbit, and they're meeting all mission requirements. And we have one satellite that is here at the Cape, processing for a launch that is planned for May of 2014 and the the remainder of the satellites are in storage at the Boeing facility and the plan is to launch them all out by the end of 2016. So that's the plan for the 2F satellites. Now with the legacy systems performing so well, many of them beyond their design life, how does that impact the 2F constellation? Well most of those satellites that are on orbit, the legacy satellites, are, have been up there well past their design life and they even though they are still operating nominally they, they don't have the new signals and the enhanced capabilities that the GPS 2F satellite offers and so it it benefits us by putting the the new satellite out there if, to have the the new L5 aviation signal and the aviation signal won't work unless there's four satellites with that signal up there so that's a little bit about the Constellation. So a little bit about you. Can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to join the Air Force? Of course, Matt. I joined the Air Force for two reasons. First, ever since I was a kid, I, I've always loved the military and, and knew I wanted to join and serve my country. I, I was When I was looking at which branch to join, I saw the Air Force and I saw all the cool technologies that they're working with, the cool jobs, you know, getting to be a fighter pilot or, or even right now getting to be a launch engineer is, is awesome. and and when I was in college, I decided to study engineering so that I could, I could, I could actually pursue those goals, and and luckily I'm here right now. So uh, you mentioned that you're a launch systems engineer. Can you li describe a little bit more your role within the GPS director to the Air Force? Of course. So I work at the Global Positioning Systems Directorate, like you said, the GPS directorate, and the GPS directorate is in charge of acquisition of all, all things GPS, so that includes the ground control system, the user system, as well as the space system of what we just saw, the, the launch of the, the fifth satellite. And so they, uh, they so the, the ground control system is actually what controls all the satellites on orbit and changes their attitude and determination to make sure that they're always pointed at Earth. And my job within GPS is to work launch integration between the space vehicle contractor, which is Boeing, and the launch vehicle contractor, which is United Launch Alliance, to make sure that both the space vehicle and launch vehicle are, are meeting all requirements and that they're compatible. Well, thank you. I appreciate that description, both of the GPS program and a little bit about yourself. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. We're going to be coming back and talking a little bit more with you a little bit later in the launch. But for right now, let's go ahead and check in on how mission progress is going and how things are looking tonight. Uh, we're approaching the end of the first of three planned RL-10 second stage engine burns. Our next event, second stage engine cutoff, or SECO-1, is scheduled to take place just a minute or two from now. Let's join Steve Agid for mission status. Uh, three minutes now remaining in this first burn. Nine minutes, 25 seconds in. Altitude now passing 168 nautical miles. Velocity 22,106 feet per second. Downrange distance 1,145 nautical miles. Burn continues to look good. Chamber pressure holding rock solid right where we want it to be. And good engine control. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining on the burn.
Now coming up on the 10 minute mark. Mark 10 minutes into the flight. Altitude now 100.